The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD is coming out soon or has already come out due to my inability to finish stuff in time. But hey, I'm tired and today we'll be talking about Skyward Sword. Now we'll be taking Skyward Sword HD no account here, so stuff in the original like Fi's insistence on reminding me that your sword is about to run out of batteries or motion controls killing people's families won't really be brought up here. I'll be talking about the problems that the HD version fixes at the end of the video, but I won't bring them up in the review since I don't think y'all would go out and buy the Wii version because I don't think you guys are psychopaths. But first, I'll be talking about the combat of Skyward Sword since it is sort of the main draw. The combat of the this game is honestly really good, even though it does get a lot of flack because you do have to move around a little bit. But this game has a lot of different options and moves that you can do thanks to the ability to move around, making your fights with enemies much more fun. The enemies here are also really great since they react fast to your moves, so you get to do some fun stuff like juking them out and then going in for an all-out attack. But Zelda ain't just about fighting enemies, it's also about puzzles, and where you'll do the most puzzles is in the dungeons. Now the dungeons in Skyward Sword are actually pretty good. The first three are only okay in my opinion, but do provide some fun introductions into different mechanics you'll use throughout the game like time crystals or fire or how to swing a sword I guess. But after the first three introductory dungeons, which is a pretty common staple of the Zelda series, the final four are some really, really great dungeons. The fire temple is just really cool aesthetically in my opinion, and those water plants that you use to solve puzzles and defeat enemies were also pretty fun as well. The sky keep is also a really cool idea with the whole dungeon being a puzzle. I really like that, even though it was a little hard figuring out where everything went. A fact you should probably know is I'm pretty stupid and bad at games, so this shit was like calculus all over again. But my favorite two dungeons, like everyone else who's played this game, were the sand ship and the ancient sister. The sand ship was really cool because it revolved around this singular time crystal on the center mast of the ship that you have to use to travel in between the past and present in order to solve puzzles. But my favorite dungeon was definitely the Ancient Cistern. This dungeon is probably a top 3 dungeon of all time for me, right behind Arbiter's Grounds in my neighbor's basement. The Ancient Cistern aesthetically was also really cool with a sort of peaceful top half filled with this golden light and this bright blue water with the green lily pads to help you get across, but then beneath the serene top half is the corrupted public school bathroom water filled bottom half. This area is filled with blacks and purples that really set the mood, especially with the change of enemies to the freaky looking cursed goblins. But one of my favorite parts of this dungeon is its final boss, Kaloktos. Tearing this guy apart and then beating him up with his own weapon is just so satisfying and badass. I realize that makes me sound like a psychopath, but it's actually okay because everyone feels this way and he's also a robot. But speaking of bosses, Skyward Sword, for better or for worse, has some. Gearham serves as the boss for both the Skyview and the Fire Temple, and he's honestly a pretty great boss to test out your sword fighting capabilities. Skordera and Mordorok are okay bosses, I guess. They feel more like mini bosses than actual bosses, which is ironic because Moldorok does come back as sort of a mini boss later on in the game. I already talked about how much I love Kaloktos, but Tantalus is another mad boss. It's just Medusa, but instead of turning into stone, they just got a huge ass eye. You also fight this flying whale thing, the Vias, and honestly, he's a pretty good boss. Sure, he was easy, but he was fun to defeat on your loft win and then on his back with knocking his green balls back at him. But one of the worst bosses in this series is in this game, the Imprisoned. You have to fight this motherfucker three times, and at no point is it fun. I'm sure you can recite each of his fights by memory for how much it's talked about, so I won't waste your time by telling you them again, but just know each of them is tedious and the only redeeming quality of these fights is the fact that spirals are pretty cool and that Gurus helps you fight during certain points, and that is it. Though this game does have one of the worst bosses, it also has one of the best. One of my favorite boss fights of all time is the final one in this game, Demise. Demise is such a menacing villain. I feel like your fight with him is a true test of your sword slash remote fighting skill that you've built up throughout this entire game and it all culminates in this one fight with Demise. Though another great aspect of this game is its items, they're some of my favorite in the series. You've got a lot of returning items like the slingshot and the bow and arrow which are pretty fun to use in this game, and you also got some items that we've seen a few times before like the gust bellows and the whip, which both items don't really get a whole lot of use outside of the main dungeons, but we do see the double claw shots back. But some of the new items are really cool like the beetle which is mainly used for solving puzzles or gathering secret items that are too far away for Link to reach with his stupid human feet. The items in this game are honestly all really fun to use. I wouldn't say they're as good as the ones in Twilight Princess or Majora's Mask, but they're still pretty good. One of the main south things that you can do in this game though are the gratitude crystals, these little orange stars that look really tasty for some reason. I don't know, I always just thought they'd be kind of good to eat. But these are fine, I guess. The quests you have to do are never really too intriguing like Majora's Masks were, but they're serviceable. My favorite was probably the one with the love letter where you can give it to either the girl he likes or a ghost toilet hand. There's an obvious choice here, but I do sort of end up feeling bad for him. It's still pretty funny though. The end reward for gathering all the gratitude crystals is pretty cool though. You get to help this demon turn into a human, which I always thought was kind of nice. Another small part of this game though were the Silent Realms, and honestly, I had no problem with these like the Tears of Light and Twilight Princess. I thought both were fine. The Silent Realms differ from the Tears of Light though. In the Silent Realms, you have 
to gather light fruits, which I'll say also looks good as well, and it has the word fruit in it, so this time I know it's edible. If you fail to get light fruit before the flower dies or get caught by one of the watchers, these weird looking guardians will wake up and begin to chase you around for 90 seconds like a game of death tag, and then will stop if the timer runs out or if you successfully obtain a light fruit. But let me just say, when you have stamina that's so small can fit in the wheel and the inability to jump, 90 seconds is a long ass time. Speaking of stamina, that's here on this game too. I honestly did not like it here. In Breath of the Wild, it's much better because you can permanently upgrade it, and while you can use potions for a temporary boost here, it's just not as good. But it honestly isn't a horrible problem since it refills fast, it just could have been a lot better. Another system in playing here though is the upgrade system, which to me, it's just eh. I honestly barely used it throughout the game when I first played it, aside from the occasional shield upgrade, which you kinda need because the shields here do have a durability system, but they're the only items that do though, so you don't have to worry about your sword breaking unless it flies out of your hand and into your TV. But you can also upgrade other items such as your bow or your stun shot to get better stability or the ability to shoot more pellets per shot. You upgrade these items though through gathering items you find throughout the world on your journey beneath the sky or in chests. So the upgrade system isn't bad, it just it wasn't great or fun to use in my opinion. But in order to get around this world, you have to use the sky. Unexpected, I know, you probably didn't see it coming. To travel through the sky in this game, you need a loft wind. A massive bird that looks like a mix between a pelican and a regular old bird. But actually traveling through the sky is a pain. The loft wind is weird to control and it only has the ability to dash three times, which you will use up pretty much in the first five seconds you start flying. There are these boost hole islands, or whatever you want to call them, but that's pretty much it aside from a few other islands. The sky here is pretty barren, and it's not cool to look at either. At least on the Great Sea, it was a nice blue and the seagulls would come in and join you while sailing. Here it's just endless white, it's like a cracker barrel but without the food and cool gift shop. The great you also have the better sauna as well. Sauna is an absolute banner. But about music, Skyward Sword has some. Now the sky theme is pretty good, I just prefer shit like the Great Seer Twilight Princess's Hyrule Field themes. The music in Skyward Sword is honestly pretty good though. I really enjoyed it, I've been playing it throughout most of this video. But one of the main parts of this game is its story. It is the origin of the entire Zelda timeline after all. As an origin sword of everything, it honestly does a pretty good job. Where it falters is in its pacing though. The opening is a little long, but I honestly didn't hate it, thought it was fine as an opening to this game. Throughout the game, the three main areas change and you have to return to them a lot and even make your way through the first area area again to grab some water, and the returning to Ares thing wouldn't be a problem if the areas weren't so boring. My favorite would probably be Lanero Desert just cause I like the whole time crystal thing. But aside from the pacing being slow at times throughout the story, it's actually pretty good. I enjoy the story aside from those few issues. The characters are pretty good as well. Zelda's at her best here in my opinion, and I really enjoyed the moments we got to spend with her, even if it wasn't that much. Link himself was pretty good. He doesn't have the expressiveness of Wind Waker Link, but he was still pretty expressive which I liked, gave him a bit more personality. Gearham was a good B villain, he was pretty menacing, especially with that weird tone thing. Demise was also a pretty good villain. I enjoyed the brief moments he was on screen. Groose was the absolute goat throughout this game though, absolutely loved him, greatest character of all time, no one can or ever will beat Groose. He needs his own standalone game where he just gets up to Groose shenanigans. The characters were actually really great, I enjoy them a lot, but let's talk about the HD version and what it changes. First of all, pretty obviously, it looks a lot better on the Switch, which is nice. It also makes Fi a lot less annoying and gives the ability to use button controls instead of motion controls, which is really great. It also introduces a new free camera and the ability to skip most cutscenes, which is nice for people who want to replay it here on Switch. But overall, Skyward Sword is a pretty great game, and if you haven't played it yet, I say definitely get it. I think it's worth it, especially with all the improvements. But if you have played this game before, I would say it's up to you. Maybe wait for it to go on sale in 5 years, because Nintendo really likes the number 60. But if you enjoyed it the first time you played it, then sure, get it again here. If I had to rate it, I would give it a 0.8 out of 1. The Amiibo and Joy-Cons also look pretty cool, but saying thought it would be fun to come back in the form of Scalper, so good luck finding them, I guess. 